Hello dreamers, welcome to another art tutorial. This video was commissioned by Vector Nature, and it is part of a series that will explore the process of character design. I am re-uploading this video to my channel to give you a chance to ask me direct questions about the process and the app. I hope you like it, enjoy! Hello everyone, Maddy here again, and I'm back today with another tutorial that will help you guys give more life to your illustrations and characters. Today we are talking about poses. Do you ever feel like you've nailed your character design, but they still end up looking a bit stiff? Here are some examples of my older drawings. I still love them very much, but there's something about them that makes the illustration less engaging. These are perfect examples of a static pose which is not bad in essence, but we can do something extra to make them look more fluid and natural. So let's see how to approach this vast and complex topic. As usual, back to the drawing board. Wait, before that, we need to start off with an extra step. I prefer to gather all my references first. This seems like an easy step, but I sometimes find that digging for the perfect references can take a lot of time. Today, I'm focusing on running. So, I usually look for some fashion or sports photos that have the same or similar pose I am looking for. Then, I try to find some still life sequences, like models wearing tight clothing and performing various poses. I find it's easier to see angles, muscles and proportions this way. Finally, I love to get inspired by my peers, so I browse around to see what other artists have created. Everything that I selected today will be mentioned in the description box below in case you want to check it out. And with that out of the way, we're heading to the drawing board in 3, 2, 1. Now that I am in Vector Nature, I will start off with a fresh canvas. Next, let's bring our references into the picture, so I'll just import them from my gallery onto the new layer. I usually start with the head, which I'll just draw as an oval with the shape tool. Now, let's pick up the pen tool, and from the head, I like to draw a line of action. So basically, the main line that describes the direction of the movement. The length of my action line will dictate how tall my character will be. Now, from this stage, I am going to draw perpendicular lines to mark the shoulders and the hips. To make the pose even more dynamic, I like to tilt the axis of the hips in the opposite direction of the axis of the shoulders. This has to do with the character's center of gravity. If the upper part of the body goes to the right, the lower part will go left in order to balance things out. Makes sense, right? Similar opposing forces are in the feet. One is tensed and the body weight is leaning on it, while the other is in the air and more relaxed. Playing around with these forces will give more realism to your character pose. To draw this skeleton, I prefer using a combination of the pen tool and the shape tool to create clean geometric shapes. I use my guides to build the torso, arms and legs. When that's done, I just add small circles for the joints. It's much easier to work with a stick figure at this stage than a full, sketched out body. Changes are easier to do, and they do not trickle down to any other layers of the illustration, because there are none. Let's go for a quick stop on Procreate to plan out the character shape around the skeleton. You can easily export your guidelines from Vectornator and add them to Procreate, or vice versa. To make sure we replicate our character's features, don't hesitate to bring more reference images to the drawing board, like I did for Jocasta's face. Alright, this is our finished pose. Consider it as your skeleton for your character. I prefer to use a dark blue instead of a pure black, to give it more interesting look and achieve that ink on paper feel. From this point on, I'd like to use the brush tool to build the body around it. Playing around with the brush editor, I found the perfect settings for my inking process. I changed the contour of the brush to have slightly bigger ends, enabled the pressure feature and then I set the stroke width between 30 to 40 points. The way you use your brush strokes can also help make the pose more dynamic. To achieve that, I try to use as many long curved lines as possible, using a technique called gesture sketching. With this technique, I can give the illusion of a soft, lean body that stretches toward the action of running. 
it's time to focus on the clothes. And this is another key element that makes your character more dynamic. Clothes move as we do, so logically they will follow the same lines of action. So when I'm going to draw her skirt, following this angle, so flowing towards the left, her bag will go in the same direction. And now we need to add movement in her hair. Looking at my reference, the hair is moving to the right, so I'm going to shape it in that direction as well. And I'm also going to add some wild strands here and there to symbolize the action of the movement. And of course, we're also going to add some details to the face. I like to divide the head in half, more or less, then add the lines for the eyes, the nose and mouth, which then I copy and reflect on the other side of her face. Then I briefly switch to the shape tool to add her accessories and the final touches. Maybe some of you will recognize her already. This is Jocasta from our previous episodes. Lastly, once the inking process is complete, I finalize by adding some simple shadows with the pencil tool. I group all the shadowy areas and then I unite them with the boolean function. Using the node tool, I adjust the edges to match the ink lines. Making something static and 2D look three-dimensional and dynamic is all about capturing movements through angles and lines of actions. And I just love how a viewer can take these simple cues to imagine the rest of the story. Why is Jocasta running? I'd like to think that she's on her way to save the day. If you need help to complete your character design, you can check out our previous episodes where we design Jocasta from start to finish. As always, stay tuned for more tutorials. Subscribe to Vectornator's channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!